There's something special about the Alexa image. The colors are just, I don't know, you can't describe it. Can't describe it. This thing was $80,000 10 years ago, and now it's 10,000. It's made like a tank. It's not going anywhere. It's made to be bumped around. It's made to be hit. It's made to drop, you know? This thing is not gonna break anytime soon. I think I turned it the wrong way and now it's stuck. Okay, good. Whew. You know, it's interesting. This camera was designed for actual professionals who have a real team. A cinematographer with a first AC and a bunch of people working on this camera. But here I am, 10 years after it was released, putting these inferior products on it, trying to use it the best I can by myself. It's kind of sad, actually, that it would come to this. It's like somebody buying an old Ferrari and not taking care of it. What we have here is an Aperture 300D Mark II going through an eight by diffusion here on a little stand. Very simple, but it's soft. And then I've got a bounce on this side, just bringing a little bit of light on that side of his face. And then uh, an LED bar from Quasar Science, uh, just giving a little bit of an edge to him. And nothing's lighting up the blue backdrop, just this soft source here. So it's a very simple setup. Filming at 48 frames a second. So Graham's gonna play something a little bit quick. Something that shows off his guitar skills here. All right, and... I'm rolling. This camera is heavy. This is a very heavy camera. This, uh, this easy rig here is supposed to be able to handle, uh, I think up to like 20 to 25 pounds. But uh, when I let go of this camera, it goes right down. <laughs> What's great about this easy rig is I can put this on my shoulder and use the eyepiece. Or when I bring it down, I've got this screen. So that's why I have this monitor here so I can uh, 
easily operate this. And uh, some people complain that the Alexa doesn't have controls on this side of the camera because it was made for first ACs to access the controls on this side. But like 95% of the controls that I need when I'm shooting, I can actually access through this eyepiece. The EVF has great controls right here and I can actually uh, control pretty much everything on the camera that I need to just from this. I put the camera up to my eye and I can immediately change the frame rate, the shutter speed, uh, the ISO, the white balance. So it's actually a very usable camera. Okay, here we go. Here it is. I apologize. We have been very busy and I have not had time to clean up all of our garbage on this table. So. This is a camera that was released 10 years ago. In 2010, the Arri Alexa was released. Before the Arri Alexa was released, digital cameras weren't super great. Uh, George Lucas tried to use one for a movie called The Attack of the Clones. Everyone was excited to jump on the digital bandwagon. Well, not everybody. Some people believe that the film was the future, but Arri, or Ari. I'm going to say Ari because I live in the United States and we say things wrong, so I'm going to say Ari, not Ari, even though Ari sounds like more sophisticated. Ari was always making film cameras. They made all the best film cameras in the world. And then they announced the Ari Alexa. This is what's interesting, and this is why I bought this camera. Ari has never tweaked or changed their color science, their dynamic range anything about their image. They've just made bigger sensors, different sizes of sensors, uh, different resolution cameras, cameras with different capabilities, different sizes, but they have never changed their color science. They've kept it the same this whole time. And so I thought, hey, why don't I buy an old Arri Alexa, and even though it doesn't shoot 4K, even, even though it doesn't uh, have all the capabilities of the new cameras, it still has the same color. And that's what's always made Aerie special. The color is gorgeous. The way it handles skin tones, very pretty. Aerie does a pre-owned certified program thing on their website where you can give them money and they send you uh, an Aerie Alexa camera that was used, that they've tested and made sure that even though it's used, it's gonna work, and they promise you it'll work for at least a year. So I dropped the dough. I bought an Aerie Alexa for $10,000 from Aerie. Maybe it's branding. Maybe Aerie's convinced me through all their clever advertisements to filmmakers that uh, they're superior in some way. I don't know. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are jumping on this new uh, C500 Mark II bandwagon because of the resolution and stuff. But I thought, hey, instead of buying a new camera like that, why don't I buy an old camera? What I'm doing now is I'm putting ND filters over the front of this lens. This cop just told us we have to move, so we're going to go on the other side of the street to continue this test. We don't want to break the law right now. It's very important to obey the law. If we break the law, then we might go to jail. We don't want that to happen. Right now I'm being filmed with the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, the iPhone 11 Pro Plus, and the Arri Alexa Classic. And these three cameras actually all represent something very different. So what I've done, these are the pouches for the ND filters. I've put ND filters on this matte box on the Arri Alexa, and what that because we put the ND filters on the Alexa, we were able to correct the shutter speed to be 180 degrees, and we were able to open up the aperture so it wasn't such a deep depth of field, so it looks more cinematic. And we were able to focus on my face. The iPhone automatically focuses on my face because it's autofocus but we had to work at it. We had to see that my face was two feet away from the lens and then focus on my face. Now, you can judge for yourself. Does the shot of me from the iPhone look better or the shot from the Alexa? Now, here's the key. Here's the key. The Alexa has control. It's not just auto features. 
and uh, the Alexa is made for a whole team of people to work with. Let's see how long it takes to boot up. I'm not gonna edit this part of the video. This is real time. I'm gonna let you know once everything is, is booted up here. I guess 10 years ago, computers weren't as fast as they are now. Aha, it's up, it's on. Okay, <clears throat> the camera is booted up. I have never owned a camera that is so heavy and well-made. It's well-made. Relatively cheap cameras, like the Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K camera. Looks pretty much as good as this, or better in some instances. Has more resolution. The dynamic range is very similar. The colors are very similar. And if you know what you're doing with color in the edit, you can get a camera like the uh, Pocket 4K to look pretty dang close to this where no one would really be able to notice the difference. We're entering this interesting time as filmmakers where the equipment we use matters less and less. You can make any camera look great. What matters more and more is experience. That's it, this camera rocks. Was it worth $10,000? If you have $10,000 sitting around, then you can buy whatever you want. So yeah, get it, whatever. But, um, I would pass if I were you.